Hi everybody, I'm Christina and I'm a content manager for a fintech called Soldo and in my spare time I run the Content UK community which is a community supporting content marketers. Excited today to have Tom Watley joining us. Uh, he is the founder of the SEO and content agency Grizzle and he's going to be giving a masterclass in content optimization for you all today. Um, which I'm sure is going to be filled with lots of good stuff. Having worked for Tom myself in the past, I know he's a, an expert when it comes to this. Um, how, it's, how it's going to work, Tom will talk for about 20 minutes and then he'll answer any questions that you've got. So if you've got any questions for Tom as he goes along, just pop them into the question section at the bottom uh, and he'll answer them for you at the end. A uh, little bit about the Content UK community if you're new here. Content UK is community to support content marketers and we offer things like a weekly jobs board with content jobs, we have a Slack group so you can connect with other content marketers, webinars, virtual meetups, virtual write along sessions and lots of other good stuff um, and you can get the best of the Content UK community through the weekly newsletter which you can subscribe to at contentuk.co slash newsletter. That is enough from me for now, I will pass over to Tom. Thank you. Hope everyone's doing okay. Um, as Christina said, what we're gonna be covering today is a very niche topic that's quite close to my heart, content optimization. And the reason being is, um, it's just a great way of getting results fast from the content that you already have. And so the gist of this masterclass and what I'm hoping that you're going to learn from this is how to optimize your content for better conversions and SEO. So very quickly, here's what you're going to learn. We're going to start by showing you how to audit your existing content and uncover optimization opportunities within your existing library of blog posts and articles. How to update the content that is most likely to uh, succeed from increased traffic uh, and boost engagement, so increases stickiness and generally engages your audience better. But also, how to identify opportunities for increased conversions and turn more readers into users, signups, leads, and customers, redistributing that content for fresh eyes, and also how to create an ongoing process to do this on a monthly or quarterly basis. So, a quick obligatory who am I slide, the too long didn't read version. I'm the founder of Grizzle, as Christina said, we're a content SEO and video marketing agency. We help mainly technology brands building end to end bespoke services to help them generate more organic traffic and conversions. Uh, and in short, we're on a mission to create ridiculously good content um, through our clients and also nurture great marketers and creators into great talent. Um, there's no point in going throughout this journey that we have over the last four years if we're not going to share what we've learned uh, along the way. And just a quick slide just to show you the kinds of companies and clients that we've worked with over the last four years or so. So before I get into the, the how-to, let's answer the question why you should even bother optimizing your content. And I'll start with a small case study from one of our clients. So these are the results from a specific piece for one of our clients where we optimized a particular blog post that sat around at the bottom of the funnel um, if you're going to use the, the traditional model. As you can see, back in 2019, it was getting around 300 page views every month. And then after our optimization approach, we managed to increase that by around 150%. Uh, so it made quite a fairly big impact. And then similarly, same client, we took this approach and ran with it uh, across content at the top of the funnel. Uh, and for this particular article, again, we managed to increase organic traffic by 411%. Just by optimizing the content, making it better, taking things that had been left there for a long time, hadn't been touched, giving it a bit more of an update using the process I'm gonna to share today. So the high level results from this particular client, we managed to increase their organic traffic by around 270% in 90 days all across the board. 
But most importantly, we managed to increase their user signups by around 110%. Um, everyone was thrilled by that. And just a quick extra one here. This is quite an interesting one and might resonate with a few of you. So here's another client that was bouncing around the bottom of page one for a very broad term that we weren't expecting to rank for. So we saw that opportunity and after trying a few things to bump it up to the top three, again, we optimized the content itself to make it more relevant for that broad term. Uh, and again, it's a small difference, 75% uh, increase overall on organic traffic. And as you can see here, for this particular term, uh, this data from our keywords tracker in Ahrefs, this is when we started tracking it. And then slowly but surely, we got onto the number one spot. Um, but if that wasn't enough to convince you, let's talk about how this approach can future-proof your organic traffic and your content. So I think around May the 4th, Google announced a core update to their algorithm that rolled out over the course of a couple of weeks. And you can tell the impact that it made through this graph from SEMrush. So around here, the volatility in uh, SERP rankings, search engine results page rankings, uh, it was quite high. So things were a little bit all over the place before normalizing again. Uh, during this time, Neil Patel did quite an interesting study. He um, analyzed 641 sites that were updating their content on an, a regular basis. And during the update at the beginning of the month, only 38 of them, which is about 5.92%, saw traffic decline by 10%, but 187 of those sites saw a traffic increase of 10%. So it's a pretty good indicator to the power of optimizing your content not just to get great results now, but also future-proof yourself later on. So with that in mind, let's get into that. And if you have any other questions uh, around the results that we've got or uh, the data that I've just uh, outlined here, feel free to ping some questions over and we'll address them at the end. So let's start with your traffic opportunities. So content that it is ripe for more organic traffic. When starting for the first time, I recommend three approaches. And the first one is really going to your keyword tracking tool and see where you rank on page two and beyond. In fact, those pieces of content that are ranking on page two for broad, uh, highly competitive, high volume keywords, um, they're probably the best opportunities to prioritize first. Uh, and the reason being is that they only need a little nudge in order to break over page one, in my uh, experience. But typically, find all those that are ranking page two and beyond. But similarly, what other content has a high bounce rate? Don't identify traffic with a high bounce rate. Identify content that has a high bounce rate. And see if there's a way that you can extend the customer journey. Do that by adding value to the videos that are landing there, figuring out if the content is relevant to the people searching for those terms and finding your content in general. Uh, and also adding more relevant calls to action, which we'll get to a little later. Uh, and then finally, which pieces of content and landing pages are generating a lot of impressions in the SERPs, but aren't necessarily generating many click-throughs? So find those that have quite a low click-through rate on the SERPs. These are three very basic approaches, but I think if you've not done this before, it's a great place to start because this is where a lot of the gold is gonna be. So here I'm gonna run through a quick real world example. I've been doing a little bit of research around Headspace and their content strategy lately because, I mean, first of all, their content strategy is fantastic, uh, but also looking through their data, they've got some interesting stories. So I put their domain through Hrefs and set a couple of filters. First of all, I excluded um, any terms that were relevant to their brand, so any mentions of the word headspace, but also um, content that was ranking on page two, essentially, so positions 10 to 20, and found this article on high-functioning depression. So it gets around 14,000 searches a month, um, and it was first published in 2017. So it's an interesting case study here. And the content itself is really good. Um, it's, first of all, the experience is beautiful, as you would expect from Headspace, because their branding is fantastic. Um, the overall experience is great. There's a little bit of how-to information there, 
And it was also incredibly story driven from a journalistic perspective, which in essence is a pretty good thing, but is also part of the problem, which we'll get to in a second. So how would we go about optimizing this particular piece of content? So I love to use this tool called ClearScope, which is doing the rounds in the SEO community at the moment. Um, but it actually acts as a really good indicator of how you should be improving upon your content. Uh, and the way it basically works without getting too deep into it is it collects data using uh, IBM Watson and data from Google directly in order to determine what are the most uh, relevant and important keywords that must be included uh, in the content. So in this case, as we can see here, there are several terms that probably should be used. Um, for a start, dysthemia, um, symptoms of depression. Uh, it, going through the content itself, I know that it's not really touching upon these terms. And if you look at some of the other articles that are ranking on page one, they do include these. And then similarly, what else is ranking on page one on Google at the moment? And what is the format of that content? Uh, so here you can see there's a couple of listicles um, around you know, what people who are suffering from depression want you to know, what the symptoms are, and what it is. Which gives a really, a really good indication of how you can guide a refresh piece of content. So for this one in particular, it, what I would do is take that story and build it around an informative framework. So talk about what it is, what the signs of it are, and also advice for seeking help, which is very important, especially if you aren't you know, a medical expert. Um, use ClearScope as a guide to expand upon those important themes. So just a quick uh, caveat, quick disclaimer, it's not an excuse to keyword stuff uh, these relevant terms into your content. You need to be a little bit intelligent and figure out, OK, this is an important term. Why is that? Usually it's because it's an important subtopic. So let it guide your outline and the subtopics and the threads that you include. Uh, and in this case, as I mentioned, seek expert advice, you know, um, especially if you're uh, creating content related to your money or your life, personal finance, anything medical related. In this instance, it's very important. Uh, and then ensure you're hitting the SEO driven content sweet spot. So I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I thought it would be worth a mention because we use this framework to drive all of our content and topic ideation. So Content must, first of all, kind of tick Google's boxes. What has it deemed uh, the most relevant topics, subtopics, and content in a particular space for a particular keyword? Um, use that as a guide for what to include in your content. But most importantly, make sure you're covering what your audience needs, what they want, and what is going to delight them. Uh, do this by making your content original, bringing in other experts, and injecting your own experiences. A few things we'll cover in a second. And then finally, your value proposition. So earlier I showed you a case study where we managed to increase signups. Um, and a lot of those actually came from top of funnel topics, top of funnel keywords. And the reason we managed to do that is because we peppered in some specific pain points that the client's project uh, managed to solve. So it's a delicate balancing act, but yeah, typically focus on the sweet spot between those three areas, and that's basically where the magic happens. So once you've re, uh, sorry, once you've updated and refreshed your content, how do you get it in front of fresh eyes? And distribution is a whole topic in itself. I'm going to touch upon it very lightly here. The best distribution strategies are built on strong relationships and strong relationship building. Whatever channel you can think of, unless it's a channel that uh, encourages the sharing of content, then you want to be going there to engage with the audience and build strong relationships with people in it. Community engagement, for example. Join Facebook groups and the Slack communities and become a welcome face that actually contributes to the conversation. Get influencers involved in the content itself in order to capture a wider audience. Don't just mention an article of theirs and then reach out once, uh, once the article goes live. How can you get them involved and collaborate them with them on the content um, and help get their name in front of other people? And then this is especially important with link building. Um, if you're still cold emailing using generic templates, I really think you need to go back to the drawing board with the link building. Um, 
it's a point of contention in the community at the moment. So I thought it'd be worth a mention. But in our experience, when you put relationships as the foundation of your link building approach, your results are going to be so much stronger because you're focusing on the creators and the people who, um, the editors of the publications and basically the webmasters and the movers and shakers in the industry. You're adding value to them first and building a relationship. And then obviously you've got your email list and, you know, seed a little bit of your paid media budget just to get a few eyeballs in. Um, don't be this guy when it comes to distribution. Obligatory webinar gift for you there. And most importantly, let your strategy guide you. So when you're going through your content audit, uh, ask yourself if these topics and these articles are actually a priority anymore. So do they fit with your strategy right now? Um, has the content been replaced by newer content? And in the, if that is the case, you can use that old content to make, sorry, the old content to make the new content better using 301 redirects to make Google happy. And typically focus on the topics that align with your strategic priorities. So if you're going after a specific market or if you're looking to move up market or if there's a particular segment you're really trying to engage with at the moment, really focus in on those. Um, I thought it would be worth mentioning the elephant in the room. So there's going to be various topics that are going to have been affected by COVID-19. And it's going to affect, and it probably already has, affected and it will change how you shape your content. And at this point, I think the best thing you can do is acknowledge it and move on. People are pretty hungry for content that's going to teach them how to do their job better in this current environment. And it doesn't matter if it's going to be here for another week, two, three months, or maybe a year. It's a pretty good opportunity to be mindful of that uh, as you optimize your content as well. So with that in mind, um, and before I go into conversions, if you have any other questions about how to increase traffic through content optimization, just ping a question and we'll get to it at the end. Let's move on to conversions. Uh, and the best way to find optimization opportunities for increased conversions is to identify your traffic 80-20. And what I mean by this is identify what gets the lion's share of traffic. Um, look at the conversion rates that those pieces of content get and compare them against benchmarks. Evaluate the calls to action within those topics. Um, are you, you know, offering the right things? Uh, and see if the conversion path aligns with where that user and that reader is trying to get to. So let's dig into these three in a little bit more depth. So the best way I think when first starting is to establish benchmarks is simply just to segment your content by top middle and bottom of the funnel. Um, calculate the average conversion rates among those segments to get some rough benchmarks for each of those uh, stages. Um, and then use those uh, yeah, to, to um, create goals, something to aim for when you're optimizing the rest of your content. Similarly, you can evaluate what impact that content is having on conversion. So a great um, place to start is figuring out if the call to action and the offer is matching where the customer is at in their journey. So I see a lot of marketers create blog posts that would technically sit at the top of the funnel. And they are all too quick to offer um, free trials, demos, things like that. And, and I guess not understand why they aren't getting the conversion rates that they want. The best solution to this is to find lead magnets and offers that um, are aligned with that topic, are relevant to that topic, and capture the audience through, uh, through that, build your email list, um, and then nurture them over time, build a relationship, and when the time is right, you know, offer something up further down the bottom of the funnel. Uh, similarly, does that lead magnet offer enough value? You know, are people going to want to exchange their email address for it? And also, is it easy to find? You know, are people having to you know, dig really deep to find a relevant call to action or find more information uh, if they need it on this particular piece of content? So a couple of examples from Pipedrive here. This one is a really simple one. It's a box that scrolls up um, once you've scrolled through uh, a, a portion of the content. 
Um, and it's very simple. It's just an offer to subscribe to their newsletter. But they also have these relevant calls to action offering relevant resources throughout the content itself. Um, you will usually see this on their blog in the middle and at the bottom. So it's not they're not overdoing it. Um, and you can get away with dropping a couple of calls to action if the content is ex you know, especially long and adds a lot of value. Um, it breaks it up, but it also captures attention while they're engaged. So just a quick note on building these lead magnets. Like I said, create resources, eBooks, et cetera, on broad themes. You don't have to create an eBook or a content upgrade for every single topic. Experiment with different formats. Does your audience respond better to PDFs and eBooks or are they more into email courses? And like I say, make taking action easy. You know, are you hiding the call to action right at the bottom in a small sentence or are you doing it in a tasteful way across the entire content experience? So before I wrap up, the things that I've covered here, they're really for doing this for the first time. So if you haven't done content optimization before, then taking these steps is a really good first step. But what if you wanna do it on an ongoing basis? I really do recommend that you do it on a monthly or quarterly basis. Make this an, act, an ongoing activity to go back and audit your content. Um, respond to changes in your industry. The whole COVID thing is a great example. Um, but also, you know, in the tech space, a lot of us, our, our products and our services are predicated and built upon other platforms. Once those platforms change, a lot of our content um, often, you know, quickly becomes irrelevant or needs a change very quickly. But you go back to a blog post about LinkedIn marketing from a year ago and it's, it's not relevant. That's a great opportunity to update it and then redistribute. And then monitor fluctuations in your metrics across the entire journey. So are you seeing dramatic uh, increases and decreases in your rankings? Are you starting to see a dramatic decrease in um, click-through rates and conversions? Keep an eye on those metrics that are important to your acquisition efforts and then respond to them accordingly. In short, start by going deep. Look for as many opportunities to capitalize on uh, as your resources allowed, and then go wide over a long period of time. So that's about it for me, just a quick obligatory call to action here. If you want a hand finding your optimization opportunities, head over to grizzle.io forward slash content UK. That's grizzle.io forward slash content UK. Uh, book a consultation. Uh, I'll be happy to help uh, provide a report and find the best opportunities for you. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll hand it over to Christina. I'm sure got a bunch of questions for me. Thanks, Tom. Do you mind clicking out of your slides then? Then our, our faces can pop up on screen. I can indeed. How's that? That's, That's me. Fun. That's just you. Still just you. Gotta love webinar jam. There we are, both our faces. But thanks for that, Tom. There was loads of really specific, actionable stuff there to take away. Uh, we have, well, we've got one question at the moment, and I've got a couple for you as well. So the first one here we've got is uh, from Ewelina Manko, who's asking, what is the best SEO software according to you? Oh, I don't think such a thing exists. Um, they all do vastly different things. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. Um, I'm, in our toolkit, our toolkit, we use Hrefs, SEMrush, ClearScope, as I've mentioned. I, I do, I've got a quite a big soft spot for ClearScope, I must admit. Um, but yeah, it really depends on what you are trying to achieve. So feel free to ask a follow-up question if you want me to be more specific. But yeah, that's a, a tough one to answer straightforwardly. I've got a question off the back of that. Um, so a lot of people might not be able to afford the really good SEO tools like the ones you've mentioned, Ahrefs, ClearScope. What would you say are the best free SEO tools out there? Yeah, okay. So for keyword research, I think Ubersuggest is a good one. That's U-B-E-R-S-U-G-G-E-S-T dot I-O, I think. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, feel free to Google it. It's a pretty, pretty good uh, free keyword tool. Um, Trying to think if there are any others. Free trials are a great thing. Um, I think the best alternative to ClearScope is Common Sense, um, 
which you need when using it anyway, but also you can get a lot of research that you need by going through the SERP, so Googling your target keyword and finding out you know, what kind of content is ranking, first of all, so what, what format is it, and what does this content contain, and most importantly, how can I make it better? How can I bring my own experiences and stories and collect other insights in order to take it to the next level? There go my headphones. Yeah, great answer there. Um, another question that I had was around, so persuading your bosses and clients to, they, they will often want you to produce lots and lots of new content all the time. How do you persuade them that it's a good idea to focus on taking a look back at your old content, maybe pausing a little bit on all the constant new content and, and optimizing? How do you make that case persuasively? Yeah, I think you can either use, you know, the type of research I've used here. But the best way to convince people to, that something is a good idea is to do it and get the results. Um, so if you have the time and the resource, perhaps go through and do an audit, find two or three of the best opportunities, and then find ways that you can actually improve that content either yourself or, you know, with your content writers or your team. Um, collect the data over time and see if it works. Um, yeah, I think I think actually having data as proof saying here, we did this and it works. Can we do this across the board? I think that's the best way to do it. In terms of prioritizing that over, you know, pausing new content, again, that really depends on your strategy as well. So if you're creating fresh content on a regular basis and it's working, I wouldn't recommend pausing it, but I would definitely find ways to, you know, get a balance between the two. Uh, again, it, it depends on the types of resources you have. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be so um, so rash to pause mm -hmm. creating new content. Yeah, that's fair. And that's a really good idea about making your own, uh, doing your own optimization and then using that to make a case for optimizing. A uh, question here from Liana. What tools would you offer to avoid plagi plagiarizing? Oh yeah, Grammarly's a great one. Um, it, I'm not sure if the free version has a plagiarism checker, but the paid one definitely does. And yeah, we, we run through all of our content to ensure that you're not ripping other people off. So give that a try. Um, sit, I'll double check, but have a quick Google to see what the features table is like to see if it has a plagiarism checker. Um, there's a couple more that I know of. Let me double check and we can email the attendees once I've uh, once I figured it out. Sounds good. We'll make sure we'll email those over afterwards. Got a question from Veronica here. What is the ideal frequency of updating a said blog slash page? Let's say we want to get from page three to one and the first update only brings us to page two. That's a good question. So I think you've kind of answered the first part of the question there. So you've done something and you're stuck on page two. Once you find that, you know, if you if you do reach a sticking point, then that's a great, you know, time to go back to the drawing board. So I talked a lot about creating this as an ongoing process during the presentation. Um, but also I, I think, you know, in terms of doing it on an ongoing basis by continuously auditing your content, but also reacting to the experiments that you're already running. Um, so yeah, I, I think the best time to re-optimize and figure out what to do next would be when you realize it's stuck on page two and won't budge. But also similarly ask the question, um, why is it not budging? Um, you know, oftentimes we find that we've optimized a content, a piece of content to death and it needs a little bit of love in the distribution area. Um, so this has happened to us actually for a particular client. We managed to get to the top of page two it was fluctuating again around the bottom of page one. And we obsessed over this one because it was really relevant to their value proposition. And the only thing for it was um, a link building and distribution approach. So putting some uh, digital PR and guest blogging uh, budget behind it in order just to slowly but surely nudge it up. Some keywords are just too competitive. Um, distribution is going to be, be key, but you can get 80% of the way there with the right piece of content. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to optimizing, um, obviously A-B testing is key to doing a data-driven approach. 
what tools can people use for A-B testing? Yeah, that's a tricky one. It's quite difficult to A-B test actual content of, uh, unless you're going to use the same tools that you would if you were testing new calls to action. So things like Optimizely, right? But that would require taking your new piece of content, your refresh piece, piece of content, and literally testing it against the new one. I'm not sure how well Google re would respond to that. So if organic traffic is your kind of true north, is, is kind of like the primary metric that you're trying to improve, I wouldn't find, I, I'd leave that. Um, it's an interesting question. I want to find the proper answer to that. But if you are going to be optimizing it for conversions, tools like Optimizely are great. So you can take the existing piece of content as it is, test new calls to actions, um, different offers and things like that without interrupting the performance of the content from a traffic perspective and an engagement perspective, of course. Okay. Uh, question here from Erica. Uh, what are the best tools, free and paid, for uncovering insights about your target audience so that you can provide the most value when optimizing content. I've got not just before you jump in, just a tool that I've been trialing recently actually is um, Rand Fishkin's new tool called Spark Toro. And I think you can do a few free searches a month um, and then there's the paid options. But what it basically lets you do is type in, um, my audience describe themselves as say content marketers. And then it will show you a list of the websites they frequent, frequent the most often, podcasts they listen to the most, YouTube channels they visit the most. So then from there, you can sort of dive in and see which content is resonating with that audience. So that, that's a good uh, new tool to try out on the market. And, and I'll let you answer as well, Tom. Yeah, that's a really good one. I had to play around with that the other day. Um, really need to get my teeth sunk into it. So a few of the approaches we use, BuzzSumo is a really good one running a search on uh, relevant terms and looking for other pieces of content that you can cite, um, as well as influencers in the space. I imagine it works in quite a similar way to Spark Toro, but just good old fashioned outreach as well. So for a few clients recently, we've been getting both influencers in a traditional sense, but also organizational leaders involved in our content. So kind of managerial, director, C-suite level experts in their field relevant to the content that we're creating to lend their insights. And it really does help to kind of guide that content. Mm -hmm. And it's just as simple as using LinkedIn, running a search for the relevant job roles that you want to get involved in the content itself, and then reaching out to them. Um, the response rate is pretty high because most people who are really good at what they do are more than happy to lend their insights for these kinds of things. Uh, and then similarly, obviously, influencers who have access to um, a larger audience, they probably have their finger on the pulse of the market, but also you have the added extra benefit of distribution on the back end of that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and using those uh, influencers as well is great for distribution afterwards if you can tag them in the finished content. Uh, Liana is asking... What skills does somebody need to write well? <laughs> I am not the right person to ask that. It's, um, that's interesting. I think the best skill is just to keep doing it over and over and over again. Just keep doing it for yourself. Um, I think Elise is here and one of like, her nuggets of advice I've seen in the past is just set up a blog around uh, a topic that you're interested in um, and just create content around that and keep doing it both to become a better writer, but also to get results as a marketer. So I'll have to ask Elise uh, if she's got some more content on that. I'm sure she'll love the fact that I've called her out on that. Elise Dobson, everybody. Yeah, feel free to ping some advice in the chat, Elise, if you're, if you're still there. <laughs> uh, another question, which I think you kind of answered earlier um, from Bryony, is which audit tools do you recommend that are free? Yeah, yeah. So I think auditing, that's an interesting one. So one thing I haven't mentioned is, you know, how useful Google Search Console is for that. Um, that can give you a lot of insights into, again, what's ranking on page two, what's getting a lot of impressions on the SERPs, but not a lot of clicks. Um, one thing I forgot to kind of dig deep upon in my presentation is when you find those articles that are 
appearing in the SERPs but aren't getting clicked on, the best thing you can do for that is testing new meta titles and meta descriptions because usually the problem there is people aren't compelled to click. So experimenting with new headlines and, yeah, just enticing people to actually click on the content and read it. Yeah, that's, that's a great tip. I think yeah. a lot of people don't deep dive enough into the Search Console. And the yeah. Google Google Analytics too, to answer the question properly. <laughs> um, two very, that's the, really, if you need some free tools, those are the only two things you need. It will give you everything that you need to get started. Definitely. I think that is all the questions that we've gone through. Thank you very much, Tom. I'm sure everyone will agree that was really useful and there's lots of stuff that you can take away to start optimizing your content. Uh, after this, you'll get sent a recording and link to the slides and anything else that Tom said he was gonna link to. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Brilliant. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thanks everybody, glad, glad you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.